With a name like Sakura Jelly, you might be fooled into thinking this is an anime game for degenerates, but in reality, it's the newest TKL from Akko. This board has some features that set it apart from the rest, but the biggest ones are the keycaps and the switches. Oh yeah, here they are. These are Gateron oranges, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, they're tangerines. Nope, not tangerines. They're actually tactile and a little bit similar to Cherry MX Browns. But anyways, I'm Hippio Tech, and let's get into that review. Now, full disclosure here, this board was sent to me by EpoMaker for review. Now, the thing I like about working with EpoMaker is they don't give me anything to say about their boards, they just mail them over and say, have fun. If you want to buy the board and support me, consider clicking that link in the description. This board can be found for $109 on the EpoMaker website, and it comes with the option of either Gateron Pink or Gateron Orange switches. The overall presentation was pretty good, with the outer shell having really nice art, and it's sliding out like a premium product. It also had a foam protector, as well as a layer of plastic protecting it as well. One bummer is the manual is entirely in Chinese, but they have it available online in English. It also included a basic keycap puller, as well as adhesive adjustable rubber feet. Now, I won't be using these, as I think these look pretty tacky, but they could be a good option if you want the board to have adjustable height. Next in the box, we have a pink USB-C cable, and it has Akko branding, and overall, pretty cute and okay quality. Let's get to the actual board, shall we? So the Akko Sakura is a 10 keyless keyboard, meaning that it forgoes the numpad for space. This could be pretty good if you play a lot of FPS games, or if you just don't use the numpad at all. If you use the numpad, sorry, no luck here. It also features a delightful pink stacked acrylic case and jelly keycaps that come stock. These are very similar to the pudding keycaps that I've reviewed before, but a little bit different as well, and we'll take a look at that later. Next, if we flip it over, you'll notice that the board is entirely flat with just some rubber feet. This is where the adjustable feet come in, and if you want to, you can feel free to attach them. Next, we're gonna take a look at the build quality, starting with the weight. Because this is an acrylic case, it's not that heavy, and it comes in at right around 890 grams. This means that it wouldn't be too bad to throw in a backpack and use for traveling, but we're not really doing that much anyways. Next, with the press test, we see that this board is about as flexible as me when I did gymnastics, and it's a bit worrying, honestly. Like, I don't think I would fear that this would snap in half, but as you can see here, you can get quite a bit of a bend in there. But because it's stacked acrylic, it's not that hollow. Let's give it a knock. So one of the bummers of this board, and with some acrylic stack cases in general, is that there can be a bit of a shift between the plates. In my case with this board, it wasn't that they were cut unevenly, but it was that the screws weren't tight enough. So I went ahead and retightened the screws, and that fixed it up quite a bit. So unlike some other stacked acrylic cases, like the Gamma K K87, this board features a medium profile, meaning that they added an extra layer of acrylic so that the switches aren't entirely revealed. Additionally, the keycaps sit at an OEM profile, so the board doesn't feel super flat to type on. Speaking of keycaps, let's take a closer look, shall we? Now, if you've seen putting keycaps before, this might not be that exciting to you, but I feel like these are a bit more special, and that it actually feels like they've been split into two parts. If you love RGB lighting, these are definitely the keycaps for you. And even if you don't, I think they look really good with the RGB off. Now, obviously this is subjective, but I think the middle ribbon of plastic looks really good, and I would probably use these on a keyboard. Additionally, these are PBT, so they have a relatively good texture and won't shine over time. Here, I've compared them to some HyperX pudding keycaps, and as you can see, that middle layer is really another layer of plastic. I think this gives them quite a unique sound. Next, let's talk about these switches. These are Gateron oranges, which are a tactile switch. They're brand new and have an actuation force of around 55 grams, so essentially they're Gateron yellows with the bump of a Gateron brown. Let's give them a listen. Now, these are quite a bit scratchy and not that tactile. However, they are a lot more smooth than Cherry MX Browns, and let's compare that real fast. So as you heard there, quite a bit less scratch on the Gateron oranges. Now let's take a look at the stabilizers. These are Akko branded stabilizers, and they're exactly what you would expect. They're rather rattly, but they're very cute. 
Normally bad stabilizers wouldn't be that big of an issue, however these switches are soldered in, so no hot swap here. The only mods you're going to be able to do to these stabilizers are putting a band-aid beneath them as you can pop them up a little bit, and then maybe you could use a hobby syringe to shoot a little bit of dielectric grease in there, but that's really your only bet unless you're down to desolder this thing, which I feel like most people probably aren't. Next we're going to talk a little bit about the RGB, and to do that we're going to have to plug it in. So let's get this USB-C cable unwrapped, and all plugged in. Then we give them a little bit of bada bing bada boom, and your RGB is turned on. This board features a full 16.9 million color RGB, with per key lighting and RGB underglow. If you love RGB, this is definitely the board for you. The included putting keycaps really add to the feel, as you can see the RGB through the keycaps. However, because the LEDs are north facing, it's a bit of a bummer as they don't shine through at the bottom. Some quick RGB controls are FN and up arrow to turn the lights up, FN and down arrow to turn the lights down, and then FN in the home cluster row to do a little bit of shenanigans. Now I'm not sure all of the modes here, but there's some of these weird reactive modes, there's some of the wavy RGB modes, there's some single color modes, and there's whatever the hell this is. From what I can see in their manual, there's about 18 different modes for the RGB. However, I think most people will probably only use a couple. Also, for the underglow, you use FN and left control to adjust the underglow, and there's around 4 or 5 options for this. Personally, I really like the snake one. But normal RGB is fine too. Yeah, fine. Okay. This board really carefully teeters the line between being really cute and being really gamery. And I personally think it hits the side of being really cute but you guys let me know what you think in the comments. I think overall, the main selling point here is that it's really cute and really pink. If that's what you're looking for in a board, well then there you go, you should probably buy this one. If you're looking for something a little bit more, maybe hot swap, then maybe look towards the Gamma K K87. I'm gonna leave you guys with a typing test. Please watch the whole thing to support my YouTube overlords. If you guys like this video, remember to give it a like, hit subscribe, and join the channel. I'm giving YouTube a shot full time throughout 2021, and by joining the channel you get to support me financially, as well as get a bunch of really cool exclusive perks, like emotes, behind the scenes footage, and you get to have fun in our live streams every week. Anyways, click that link down below to join, and enjoy the full typing test.